This game is still relevant to talk about, right? I don't even know where to begin with this one. Sonic the Hedgehog 4 is such an odd inclusion into the Sonic franchise, it's actually probably the most worthless Sonic game ever made. Like, this game could not exist and no one would lose any sleep over it. Damn, this review really isn't starting out too polite now, is it? Guess before I discuss why Sonic 4 was such a colossal failure, I should bring up the company that made it. While Sonic Team was co-developing this game, almost all of Sonic the Hedgehog 4 was developed by the Dimps Corporation. Their library before Sonic 4 was mostly handheld titles, consisting of the Advanced Trilogy, the Rush Duology, and the handheld versions of Sonic Colors and Onwards. A lot of Sonic fans really seem to love to shit on Dimps, but to be honest, I don't think they're all that bad. I haven't really finished any of the games made by them, well, besides these two, but from what I've played of the Advanced Trilogy and Rush 1, they seem like solid titles. I mean, Advanced 2 definitely has a lot of issues with it, which I'll definitely delve way more into whenever I review that game because, oof, I just got back into doing these guys, let's give me some time now. By the way, go watch Gavin's collab review of the Advanced games you did with Jack's Gaming Zone. It's a really good review. Anyways, Dimps has had a good enough track record when it came to 2D Sonic games, so they weren't the worst choice to be given the liberties of making Sonic the Hedgehog 4, and at the time, much awaited sequel to Sonic 3 and Knuckles, one of my favorite games of all time in fact. Some people may label this as unfair to do when judging the game, but whatever. There was a lot of hype built around Sonic 4 when it got announced. This game had a lot to live up to. And, even though I don't really need to say this, did it manage to please everyone? For me, Sonic the Hedgehog 4 is just a mixed bag. Both episodes, actually. Yeah, that's the first red flag. Why the hell was this an episodic release? It's supposed to be a classic Sonic game. Those can be really short and super easy to make. So what's the point of splitting them up into separate episodes? Won't that just make production of the game way more complicated if one future episode doesn't do as well as the previous one? That's probably a point I'll bring up later on in the review. Guess I'm forced to look at both episodes separately. So let's look at episode one first. So the plot of Sonic 4 Episode 1 is... non-existent. Dr. Eggman shows up and starts turning animals into robots again, so Sonic arrives to stop him, and you know the rest. There's not a whole lot here. It's incredibly by the numbers and doesn't really have anything else attached to it. Oh well. I mean, I did praise previous games for taking simpler plots and rolling with them in the past, so I'll let this slide for Sonic 4. I guess now we can move on to the gameplay. Yeah, this is where things start to fall apart. Okay, the basics. You can only play as Sonic in this game. No Tails, no Knuckles, no Amy Rose even. Just Sonic. <sighs> Fine. Sonic's moves consist of the spin dash, the roll, which is made completely useless in this game, but I'm about to get to that. And his forms of attacking enemies include jumping into them or even spinning into them. The classic movesets aren't the only thing Sonic has. He's also got a brand new ability as well, the homing attack. This works just like it does in the 3D games. A target reticule will pop up on a nearby enemy, then you tap the jump button twice to home in on them. It's an incredibly useful move to defeat enemies like it is in the past, but for this type of game, I don't think it needs to be here. Obviously, in the classic games, Sonic never had the homing attack, because he didn't need it. The reason why they invented the homing attack for Sonic Adventure and onwards was because it was way more difficult to land jumps on enemies in 3D. So the homing attack was an incredibly useful move, and it also kept the pace going whenever you're playing through a level. In 2D, however, it's the exact opposite. It always feels as if Sonic comes to a complete halt whenever he's using a homing attack on an enemy in this game. This element is also something that leads to two major failures in this game. The gameplay, and the level design. There are only four levels in this game. Yep, just four. Splash Hill, Casino Street, Lost Labyrinth, and Mad Gear. The most obvious thing people have complained about with this game is the reused level themes. For whatever reason, the game designers decided to just make this a complete ripoff of Sonic 1 and 2, rather than just, you know making this a proper sequel to Sonic 3 and Knuckles, which would help explain why this game was called Sonic the Hedgehog 4. Yes, I'm aware Sonic Mania also reused old level themes too, which I am gonna bring up whenever I review that game next, but at least Mania was being honest about how it was reusing older levels. It didn't give them new names as an attempt to try and pass them off as new levels. 
I would also be in favor of reused level themes as long as the level designs and layouts are fun to play through. Sonic 4 Episode 1's level design is... not horrible, but also just not that good. A lot of the levels are incredibly simplistic. There are some cool bits they put in where trailing off a certain pathway will lead you to a ring box, an extra life, and whatever, but a part of me feels this isn't anywhere near as layered as the Genesis games, especially Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Some of the levels try to throw in gimmicks to make things a little more interesting, but most of these levels are very forgettable. They can also come off as a chore to play through sometimes. Lost Labyrinth is predictably the worst level in the game. The level layouts aren't technically bad, but it's definitely the most unsonicy level in the game. The platforming here is way too simplistic and blocky. It feels more like you're playing a Mario level more than anything. Also, that light gimmick in Act 2 can go straight to hell. While I think all the levels in this game are really forgettable and not very fun, if there is one level I can at least compliment, it's Casino Street Act 2. This level's really fun. It's painstakingly easy like the rest of the game, but this is one of the only levels in Episode 1 that I feel the game designers must have had a lot of fun making. The card gimmick in this level is actually a ton of fun, and I really love farming for lives here. Yeah, life farming, something you could do extremely easily in this game. So much so that there's actually an achievement for reaching 99 lives. Haha. <laughs> However, there's another issue I have with this game, and it's also a major issue that can affect the levels in a huge way. Quite possibly my biggest issue with Episode 1, the physics. Yeah, 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 everyone's brought up and complained about the physics in Sonic 4 being crap for years now, but it's my turn, alright? The physics in Sonic 4 are nearly non-existent. One of my least favorite things about this game is that Sonic just doesn't feel like he has a whole lot of weight to him. Air momentum just doesn't exist. Rolling down a hill never carries any momentum. That's probably where you'll first start to notice the issue with this game's physics. The momentum-based gameplay style from the classics just isn't anywhere to be seen here. A lot of fans have pointed out that the physics engine here just seems to be the same gameplay engine they used in Sonic Rush. However, in Rush, it made sense for Sonic to control that way because he had the boost, a gameplay element that could probably easily throw the player off if the gameplay in Rush tried to be more momentum-based like the classics. So Rush was doing its own thing, but the thing is, Sonic 4 doesn't have the boost, so there's no real excuse for this game to be playing like this. Sonic feels so damn stiff to control. It is very easy to get adjusted to this game's new physics, but if you're gonna call this game Sonic 4, you have to make sure the gameplay matches the first three games along with CD. So what do we do with a stiff Sonic with zero physics and a worthless homing attack? Well, the game decides to just play itself sometimes. A lot of the levels can be laced with springs and speed boosters placed in really pointless locations. It's almost as if the game designers realized that Sonic controlled like ass, so they just put all these speed boosters and shit here to help guide the players through the levels. Guys, that's not how you fix the issue. Can you at least put some effort into this? Okay, minor nitpick, but I really hate these homing attack chains, especially in 2D. In 3D, whatever, kinda lazy, but I'll take it. In the previous games, I really liked how they'd help lead you to different shortcuts or extra pathways that help you find a few hidden rewards and such. Sonic 4, however, seems to use these in the place of actual level design. I mean, these lead to some alternate pathways, but they're way too overused to a point where it becomes extremely noticeable that they're just placing all these things here because they couldn't think of anything else to put in these levels. That's kinda lazy. You know what else feels pretty lazy? This game's boss fights. Just like how all the level themes were rehashed, so were the boss fights. The Green Hill Wrecking Ball and the Casino Night boss are nearly the exact same. But this time Eggman does try to do things that are a little different than the last time we fought these, but they're still incredibly easy to beat. The Labyrinth and Metropolis bosses are rehashed too, but the second half of the boss fights try to change things up, sorta. So in Lost Labyrinth you gotta avoid being crushed, and the Mad Gear Zone boss ends with Sonic chasing down Eggman while he's trying to throw some bouncing Eggman at him. I appreciate that Dimps tried to pull new spins on these old boss fights, but it doesn't make me forget that they just blatantly reused old boss fights from the Genesis games just so they could avoid making new ones. Oh yeah, and just before Episode 1's final boss, we're forced to go through a boss rush in the Egg Station Zone. And after the boss rush, we're just fighting the Death Egg robot from Sonic 2 again. 
Yeah, this is the final boss. I'll give some credit to this boss for having a pitch face that makes it a little difficult, but it more just comes off as annoying, and also that final hit near the end is so bullshit. So you beat the game and Sonic just runs off to do that same stupid pose he did back in Sonic 1. Why is this game sucking Sonic 1's cock so much? Oh, right, I didn't get all the Chaos Emeralds. Guess I gotta try and do that again. Yeah, emerald hunting is something you could do in this game via the special stages. To access them, just like in Sonic 1, just collect 50 rings and jump into a big ring at the end of the level. Just make sure you don't miss the jump because otherwise you're gonna be forced into autopilot and miss the ring entirely. Fun. The special stages are carbon copies of Sonic 1 special stages, but with a twist. Ish. In Sonic 1, the special stage was automatically rotating, and you had to guide Sonic by jumping through the stages to reach the emerald near the end. In Sonic 4, however, you're controlling the stage, not Sonic. So now you gotta rotate the entire level to help Sonic reach the emerald. It's a neat spin on this special stage, but I can't help but think that maybe the game designers just looked at gameplay footage of Sonic 1's special stages, and they might have gotten the wrong idea that you had to control the stages rather than Sonic. The controls aren't too difficult to get used to, so these special stages can be pretty easy, with the exception of a few annoying obstacles. The goal signs from the original special stages are back, though this time they're just a red circle with an exclamation point on them, so you gotta avoid these at all costs. Then there's my least favorite part of these special stages, those stupid ass bumpers. Why? Because no matter what speed you end up hitting these things at, these bumpers always have a preset momentum to just bounce you far away from it. It's incredibly irritating, especially during the last special stage. Despite that, these special stages aren't really that challenging. They're pretty easy. Too easy, in fact. So much so that Dimps put a freaking time limit on them just because they realized they were way too easy. However, the timer is no sweat. Like, at all. Why? Well, there's a reset button in the pause menu. Yeah, effectively making the time limit no longer a threat. This also makes it extremely easy to get all 7 emeralds in one go. After getting all 7 chaos emeralds, not only do you get the good ending, but you'll also unlock the ability to play as Super Sonic. Yeah, that's probably the only noteworthy thing about Sonic the Hedgehog 4. This was the first Sonic game in 16 years since Sonic 3 and Knuckles, or 13 if you want to count Sonic R, where Super Sonic was finally made playable in regular levels again. Yes, this game predates Sonic Colors by a month. This is another compliment I'll give Sonic 4, because playing as Super Sonic again after all this time was a lot of fun. However, this isn't as special anymore because every game after Sonic 4 has had Super Sonic unlockable. Not to mention, this game's physics and gameplay not being very good can only make Super Sonic so fun to play as. It's a decent reward for getting all the emeralds, but it's not really something to write that much home about. So, the music. The soundtrack for Sonic 4 is really confusing. The composer for this game is actually one of my favorite video game composers ever. You know him, it's Jun Sano! The same guy who composed the adventure games, Heroes, he sound directed Generations, and even composed Shadow... Okay, not everything he does is perfect. Though the first ever Sonic game he did the sound and music for was Sonic 3 and Knuckles. So he was the perfect choice to compose the follow-up to the very game that he made his debut in. However, the direction he went for in Sonic 4's soundtrack was... misguided? For some reason, June felt that he needed to make the entire soundtrack in this Genesis-like, bit-crunched fashion, which I really don't understand. Just looking at the game, it's clearly not trying to be all 16-bit looking. So this just makes the soundtrack really unfitting. Not only that, but the sound font June used was really, really bad at points. There are some tracks that I do enjoy, like some of Splash Hill, most of Casino Street, and the special stage music, but a lot of the soundtrack is kind of forgettable and bland. The melodies and all are alright, but it's the instrumentation that I think ruined the entire soundtrack, for the most part. In fact, my favorite track out of the entire OST isn't even in the game. It's a bonus track on the soundtrack CD called Splash Hill Medley, which should speak for itself, but what's interesting about this track is that it uses Splash Hill Zone's music, all while incorporating real instruments. <laughs> It doesn't sound half bad, so why wasn't the entire soundtrack made this way? I mean, that could've been way better, 
Even Sonic Mania's soundtrack didn't go in this Genesis wannabe direction. Oof. In conclusion, Sonic 4 Episode 1 is... Eh? I mean, it's not... awful, but it's also just not... that good. It's functional, for the most part, but there's just not a whole lot here to really warrant a future revisit. The only reason I went back to play this game was just to review it. This game has no long-lasting appeal, and that's its biggest issue. There's never gonna be a moment in time ever when you're maybe just chilling with your friends, just hanging out and whatever, then one of you just go, Oh, oh, dude, remember Sonic 4? Remember Lost Labyrinth? That level was so chill. That's never gonna happen! Sonic 4 Episode 1 is just... It's a mixed bag. It lacks its own identity. It, it just exists. People bought it and it made enough money to get a sequel. Next page, please. Well, after a pretty short wait of two years, we eventually got the second installment of this... saga. Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episode 2. Surprisingly, I think I might have a bit less to say about this episode. Is it better than Episode 1? No. In fact, I think this is on the same level as Episode 1, but it just comes with its own set of problems, which also manages to bring it down to that same level of... Eh. The plot involves... Oh wait, Episode Metal comes first. Yeah, for some reason, Metal Sonic and even Little Planet got shoehorned into Episode 2. Why? Because that awesome port of Sonic CD by Christian White had got released just a few months before this game. So, might as well bank on that while it's still hot. Anyways, Episode Metal involves Eggman going back to Little Planet to revive Metal Sonic. So, Eggman revives him, then Metal Sonic sucks up a purple energy thingy in Lost Labyrinth, then he still tells his rocket to go chase after Sonic and Tails. On to Episode 2. Sonic and Tails show up in the tornado because remember Sonic 3? This time, for no reason at all, Little Planet comes back. Just for the record, I don't read the comics and I don't care if they gave an exclamation in a certain issue or whatever. I feel that the actual game should have explained it too. However, Eggman decides to take over Little Planet, again, with the help of Metal Sonic. This results in Eggman rebuilding a brand new Death Egg around the planet, the Death Egg Mark II. So Sonic and Tails get aboard the Death Egg Mark II, they beat up Metal Sonic, give Eggman a heart attack, then they just leave with Little Planet still stuck inside the Death Egg Mark II. Um, I think they might have forgotten they had to save the planet. Uh, guys? So that was Episode 2's plot. It wasn't very involving, and connecting it with Sonic CD was extremely pointless, and was also pretty unimaginative when it came to its execution. Who cares? Gameplay. Like in Episode 1, only Sonic is playable, and he still has all his movesets from the last game. Yep, this also includes that 2D pace-killing homing attack. Just the move I want in my classic Sonic game. Oh, and obviously, Tails is here, and is always following behind Sonic on every level. At certain points, you'll end up coming across a sign that you can't turn off, which will give you a clue on how to use one of the two abilities that Tails adds on to this game. First, there's the obvious move that allows Tails to carry Sonic through the air by mashing the jump button. This move can also be used to help Sonic swim in some stages. Then there's the second ability that allows Tails and Sonic to enter this rolling move that makes them invincible to everything. Except for bottomless pits, obviously. These moves are nice and are occasionally useful, but I don't like how in some levels the moves are mandatory to get past certain areas. Sometimes you're even forced to use these moves above bottomless pits and such. The rowing move is also incredibly broken. You can probably spam it in every level to beat the game insanely easily. Alright, moving on. So how are the physics in this game? They're... better, sorta. I mean, Sonic this time around does feel like he has some weight put onto him, but I still wouldn't call the physics in this episode perfect. It feels more like all Demps did for episode 2 was just go into the physics engine or whatever, and just turned up Sonic's friction from 0 to like... 1.5? Some parts of the levels try to build the illusion that rolling down hills makes Sonic go faster, but it still never feels like it's something he's doing naturally. There are even some cases where I ran up a loop or whatever with a decent amount of speed, but whenever you're just pressing down, you know like how it would be in the classic games, it still feels like there's something that's making Sonic slow down. That's not how it should be. I don't mean to focus on this so much, but this can seriously get in the way of enjoying the game. Despite my complaints, the gameplay was slightly improved for this game. The physics may not be one-to-one, -one, but it's passable. I'll give it that. 
But once you've got your gameplay style and your Sonic game up and ready, you also gotta remember to give us some memorable levels. In episode 2, we go to completely new levels. Sylvania Castle, White Park, Oyo Desert, what? Sky Fortress, and the Death Egg Mark II. Though that one I wouldn't necessarily count because it's only one act long and is mainly just here for the final boss of Eggman later. So yeah, that's four actual levels. Again. Are you kidding me? Even if you combine this total amount of levels with the one from Episode 1, that still makes the game shorter than Sonic 2 and Sonic 3. This isn't how a sequel should be! Was Dimps even trying to pull out all the stops here? Even though I did say that these levels were brand new, if I'm at all honest, they're not all that original looking. Sylvania Castle is just aquatic ruins, Oil Desert is clearly just Oil Ocean but in a desert, and Sky Fortress is just another take on Sky Chase and Wing Fortress. It's even using the same phrases, what the fuck? By the way, did you notice something about these stages? Yeah, all these levels are just copies of Sonic 2 levels. Just like how Episode 1 was sucking off Sonic 1, Episode 2 is going down on Sonic 2. Boy. I wouldn't even consider White Park to be an original stage because it just feels like a very watered-down ice cap from Sonic 3. Yeah, I mean, graphically they all look fine. For example, I think the lighting in Sky Fortress is really pretty to look at, so these stages have that at least going for them. Though it is pretty odd to go from the high-def 2D sprites of Episode 1 to 2.5D graphics in Episode 2. This also meant that Episode 2 couldn't come to the WiiWare due to hardware and space limitations, so Wii users got totally boned in that aspect. Rip. Even then, the level selection here is still really, really underwhelming. I'd say that Death Egg Mark II is probably the worst level in the game with it only being one act and also having some of the most insanely simplistic level designs in any 2D Sonic game ever. Actually, yeah, let's talk about that. The absolute biggest complaint that I have towards this game is not the story, it's not the lukewarm physics, and it's not even the underwhelmingly new levels. It's the most major part that I look forward to in any Sonic game, which I think Sonic 4 Episode 2 completely misses the point and shits all over. The level design. If I could put it into perspective, fuck you. If you're gonna make a Sonic level, you have to make it a playground. Throw in the usual loops, slopes, and whatnot, but do creative things with the levels. Put in a little fun details like hidden areas, alternate pathways. Make the levels even greater by how you could utilize Sonic or any other character's abilities to reach new areas in different locations. It helps add a lot of replayability, which is such an important factor to have in a Sonic game. I'm not just referring to 2D either. The same can be applied to 3D too, but that's not the point right now. 2D level design in Sonic games can sadly be stereotyped as hold right to win. You know, that old saying. After playing the classic games and especially Sonic 3 and Knuckles, I think that could be complete BS. But with games like Sonic 4 Episode 2 existing, oy oy oy, where to start? Look, you can give me incredibly uncreative looking levels, or even reused levels, as long as the level designs and layouts are really fun and super in-depth. Unfortunately, none of Episode 2's levels have that. Every level is designed almost the exact goddamn same. Hold right, jump, hold right some more, home into this, home into that, jump again. No wait, use the special roll attack here, use the flying move here. Oh, don't worry if you can't make it through this area. There's like a million springs and speed boosters everywhere to help you do something as simple as run forward. Actually, that's one of the worst things about episode 2's levels. Instead of putting actual effort into the level designs, Dimps decided to just put a bunch of springs and speed boosters everywhere to give this weird illusion of having a spectacle happen. This could have been fine in maybe one or at most two levels, but every goddamn level? This is lazy! Lazy! These things are placed everywhere, and a lot of the time, they're in some of the worst locations. My least favorite is just these bits where the springs are on the ceiling and the floor? And all they're doing is sending you forward! What's the point? All you have to do is just hold right in these areas! Why did they even bother placing these here? It may seem like I'm exaggerating a bit, which I am. This video wouldn't be very entertaining if I was just talking all monotone and shit. But I focus on this so much because I feel like all these lazy decisions in the level designs really ruined the experience as a whole. When every level feels the exact same or is just plain boring, why would I ever want to replay this game ever? White Park Act 2 is probably the worst casualty, because this is a roller coaster level. The concept is perfect for Sonic. Imagine all the fun we could have in a roller coaster themed level, with all the fun loop-de-loops, cool secrets and such. 
But no, all we get is holding right, springs, and speed boosters everywhere. This game is essentially playing itself for 95% of the time. Yeah, the springs and speed boosters were in Episode 1, but it wasn't as overused as it was in Episode 2. Come on, dimps. Was this really the best you could come up with? Even the Sonic Advance games felt more accurate to the classics. And Rush 1, and that game wasn't even trying to be a classic Sonic game. Even the level designs in Episode Metal felt more in-depth. Oh yeah, Episode Metal had its own levels. Actually, it's just the first four levels from Episode 1 with one act each. Great DLC. Well, at least it was free. It's nothing too special. Like I mentioned, you're just playing through the first episode stages again as Metal Sonic, who does have Episode 2's slightly improved physics. Cool, cool. The level design in this DLC is way more fun than what Episode 2's levels can offer, but that's mainly because a lot of the same layouts from Episode 1's levels are just reused here. Sometimes it does try to rearrange things in the level layouts to make them seem new, but you can immediately recognize the same layouts if you played Episode 1. Episode Metal is fine DLC on its own, but it's not very memorable and it doesn't even allow proper lock-on features like the trailers made it seem like, so you can't even play as Tails in the Episode 1 stages, so there's almost nothing really new to be done here. That lock-on advertising was so obnoxious by the way. If you're gonna say that this game has proper lock-on features, then put in actual lock-on features. Okay, are the boss fights in Episode 2 any good? Eh. Thankfully, we don't get any reused boss fights. Dimps decided to go more original with Episode 2's bosses, but like a lot of the original content in this episode, they're nothing special. A lot of these bosses can drag on for way too long, and they're also just not fun to replay. Some of their concepts are pretty interesting, but it's pretty clear that Dimps just didn't care about putting that much effort into this game. Also, yeah, haha, they tease us by making us think the Aquatics Ruined boss got reused in Sylvania Castle. Funny the first time, but not so funny the eighth time. Would have been really nice if they gave us an option to skip the cutscenes. The final boss also isn't very difficult, or grand even. I've heard a lot of people mention that when they got to this boss fight, they had no idea that this was the final boss. So they were caught off guard when the game just... ended. <laughs> Even Sonic looks disappointed. Oh yeah, I didn't get all the emeralds again. Okay, let's go get them and see the good ending, I guess. You access the special stages in Episode 2 in the same fashion you get to them in Episode 1, so... IDK, just copy and paste what I said last time here. And the special stages are, oh, of course, the halfpipe from Sonic 2! Remember Sonic 2?! Also, I'm really happy they reused the halfpipe. They've never used this in another Sonic game ever. I'm so not sick of it. I hope they continue to use this in every Sonic game. Whatever. You get all the emeralds, you could play as Super Sonic again, who's still running on Episode 1's physics, which is... okay. Then you beat the game, and... <laughs> There's nothing. I'm actually relieved. Let's move on. The music... it... sucks. It's one of the worst soundtracks I've ever heard for a Sonic game. It continues in Episode 1's misdirection where it's trying to sound Genesis-like, but meanwhile the game looks even less Genesis than Episode 1 did. So now it just makes even less sense for Episode 2's soundtrack to be composed this way. Once again, the instrumentation is what kills the entire soundtrack. Junsen, no. I love his previous work, but I think this might just be his worst soundtrack. The compositions are so short and repetitive, and the god-awful sound fonts, which somehow sound worse than the ones he used in Episode 1, really make the soundtrack ear-grating at points. There are some tracks that I like, sure, but I don't think two or three okay tracks are enough to save the entire soundtrack. I... I honestly can't believe I'm about to say this, but... Shadow the Hedgehog. As much crap as I may have given that game, I think it had a much better soundtrack than anything from Sonic the Hedgehog 4, Episodes 1 and 2. Holy crap, you guys have no idea how much that took out of me to admit. Boy. One last thing to mention, this game has both loco and online multiplayer. Yep, online multiplayer. The servers are still up, but don't expect there to be anyone there. Needless to say, the online community for Sonic 4 Episode 2 is not very active. I did play the online multiplayer on Steam with my good friend the Jazzy Man. We didn't get very far because we got bored. 
Oh, and seeing how both Jazzy and I are basically on opposite sides of the world, you can probably put two and two together that our connection wasn't the most stable thing ever. So, how does episode two stand up? It sucks. It's not awful, it's not the worst Sonic game ever made, but I'd still put it on the same level as episode one. Meaning the game is just... eh. There's definitely way more stuff in episode two that annoyed me more than episode one did, but episode two is just... A mixed experience. The graphics look decent and the controls are slightly improved upon, but just about everything else it needed to get right, it just screwed up. Episode 1 had its issues, sure, but I at least saw some amount of effort put into it. I feel like Dimps tried to make that episode a little interesting, but Episode 2 just comes off more like it was an obligation for Dimps to make. It's like when production of this game started, they just went, well, we made this episodic, guess we just have to make Episode 2. In the end, this game, both episodes, just has no heart. I think the most important thing is that this game didn't need to be called Sonic 4. This should have been nothing but maybe a mobile game called Sonic Portable, or something generic like that. Calling it Sonic 4 was such a terrible idea. It's practically the number one reason why I gave this game such a hard time. Heck, it's why every Sonic fan gave it a hard time. Sonic the Hedgehog 4 is pointless. It doesn't need to exist. This game has no worth at all. It was made to make money. It was called Sonic 4 to sell copies. Don't buy this. It's not worth it. Mania may be $20, but that game is way more worth getting. So don't use your $20 on this. Just don't. I'd say wait until there's a price drop for this on Steam when it's like $5 or whatever. I, I don't know. I don't care. I'm done. The review's over. Thanks for watching. Go buy Sonic Mania Plus. Good night. Oh, okay. Hey guys, I just finished editing the review. It is nearly 3 in the morning. Oh no. Um, okay, so I should address the elephant in the room. Uh, it's been... About 11 months since the Spider-Man review, and I just want to apologize to everyone for this sudden hiatus on doing game reviews. I just needed to sort some things out in my personal life, so I just had to rethink some things, and right now I think I am ready to go back to doing these things, but I do just want to let people know that the later reviews are going to mostly be Sonic related. I might venture off into other franchises maybe soon-ish, but it's going to mostly be Sonic, so leave all your Sonic review suggestions in the comments if you want. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you for being patient. I'm so sorry. I am lousy at uploading these things consistently, but, you know... Thank you for sticking by and for supporting my work. That's super cool. Also, by the way, there was going to be a bit more into the multiplayer section for episode 2. I was going to record it with Jazzy Man on Steam. We were going to play the Steam version. He was going to record it on his end. But unfortunately, we that those plans just fell through because Jazzy's just been t too busy. And of course, us being on like me being in America and him being in Australia, time zones aren't very nice to us, so we couldn't get it to work out anyways. Oh well, but um, you know, so grateful that we played it briefly that one time on Steam and I showed some screenshots I took of it, so yeah. Uh... Okay, so two people I want to thank for their involvement in this review is of course the Jazzy Man. You heard him briefly whenever like at the end of my episode one review when I'm just like, oh there's never gonna be a point where yada 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 and then uh, Jazzy just, you know, went, Oh, remember Lost Labyrinth? That was so chill. Yeah, that was him who said that line. So, uh, thank you, Jazzy, for recording that really dumb line. Yeah, I owe you, my man. Yeah, shine on. Macca's shrimp on the Barbie. Oi. And the second person I especially want to thank is Kai. My boy Kai. He's known as Melancucky Art on Twitter. I'll put a link to his Twitter in the description. He actually drew the thumbnail for this video. And I'm gonna get him to draw the future thumbnails for later reviews, so... Yeah, if you liked this cool-looking thumbnail, well, the other reviews are gonna have cool thumbnails too, because Kai is super talented and super good at drawing, and that's why I hired him. He's actually a really big fan. He's, like, one of the first fans of mine who's legit had an amazing drawing talent and has drawn fan art of me. 
which I am very touched by. So, thank you, Kai. I'm so grateful to have you, I guess, on the, on the team as a graphic designer. You're, uh, you did good. Can't wait to see more stuff by you. So, yeah. Anyways, that's all I've got for this end slate. If you want to support me actually financially, I guess, uh, there's a link to my Patreon. And if you just give me one dollar, you'll gain access to all my Patreon exclusive updates. And also, you get access to my Discord server, which I'm making paid now because I had a public one. But that didn't go very well. Some really weird people started joining it and it made me really anxious. And I'm just like, ah, uh, fuck that. Paco's making noise. So if you want to join my Discord server, you just have to give me at least one dollar on Patreon. And I will send you an invite and then you could come chill. And hopefully make the server more active. So, yeah, that's in the description. Thank you all for watching this review after all this time. Thank you all for the support, and have a good night. <laughs> I gotta go to bed. See yas.